Leckengreg Vegan Camp, the 1st of July 2021. What are you doing? Soup, mushroom, mushroom soup, mushroom. I don't know in the English what they call. Hit your fire. Can we My how delicious. Bamboo mushroom soup. This is bamboo mushroom. This is expensive mushroom. Normally the sale is um. For this one is 1,000 baht per kilo. It's fresh, nah, not dry. If dry, is 3,000 baht per kilo or 5,000 baht per kilo. This one is really good because this is young and it has a lot of um, antioxidant and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what the call is. Uh, that's good. Yeah. I have a lot of ingredients inside. I have tomato. I have carrot. I have potato. What potato? And I had lemon glass, pepper, celery. Passion fruit on the way. Passion fruit flowers. A lot of lime Mango. coming up. Mangoes ripening up on the table. Makrut lime from this tree in front of the bathroom. Bananas in the nets. Making a little bit of a, a bamboo project to make a a table for the small pieces of bamboo. More mangoes undercover. Undercover mangoes! The bean plants started to really show how, how they can grow. This is quite nice. When the mango is on the tree and the tip here is getting like orangey. This this is already like getting overripe and like moldy or whatever it's called. And the, the black spots, growth of some kind of fungi or whatever. This is like ready to pick, in my opinion. And, and then it will be ripe in a day or two. The ripeness is in the bottom. So if you put the 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 mango like this. It should be like stored like this so that the sweetness from the top or the ripeness from the top goes down into the bottom. That's I think it's best to store them. That's why they, they are stored normally not like this but like or, or stable like this. So they are like a little bit like that. Oh. So when you we're doing twist it like that and it already breaks from the from the tree it means it's uh, it's ripe. Normally when it's unripe you cannot just like twist it so easily off the tree. Very good mango. And mangoes like this, when the black spots are arriving around, they could also be picked right now. But this one is just not super ripe in the bottom, so I can let it hang. But there's a risk that it will crack and when the rain comes and the sun comes. So sometimes it's just better to pick them a little bit early. They will be tasty anyway, mega. Cracked one. I didn't see that before. I need to take it down. This year we have so many mangoes. Like, I we, we could use this part of the mango, but we have so many and uh, almost two freezers full. It's uh, a little bit too much. So this one is just compost. We're saving the back. Chilies. One chili plant here and uh, another plant. Chili plant over here. Beans and another newly planted red cavendish. Our neighbor, Chaco man. Hey. <laughs> Some pruning of the mango trees. We have we still have a problem with the tree stem borers or what they're called. The ants are even dying because of the sap of the tree coming out. So and I don't know if this is a mango stem borer or yeah the worms that go in and eat the, the mango from the inside planted some more pumpkin but yeah i guess we will have mangoes around for another two weeks 
maybe a couple on the end of the month. We have different types, so I think we will have still mangoes on the tree. Mangoes on the trees until end of July, I think. And maybe have a couple in August on trees, the other types. Season is just shifted one month. But it has been a bit like rainy and then it has been quite dry the last week or so. And it's just like changing a bit. So it's a right now it's a, a bit dry with season for what it's like some of the trees that we planted in the new land or 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 dying a little bit or I don't know if they will survive let's see this type of mango will be uh, ripe a little bit later but we cannot save them all a lot of mangoes are just composting it's also good for biodiversity and having all kinds of insects the <laughs> jackfruits are composting I think that these are too young or like they're not super tasty that's why and also when you have a lot of mamuang uh, like mangoes then you just don't want to uh, eat so much uh, jackfruit and other stuff. And also it's rare that I eat bananas right now and I can feel it. I can feel that like doing, uh, eating a lot of mango and not much other variety of fruit like bananas. It's really, it's like, I have like mango to the top, over the, the top of my head. And when you eat like a fruit, one fruit, because there's so much of it then it's uh, for a month or one month and a half you're mono mono eating a fruit and then you eat maybe some rice in the evening or the afternoon I wouldn't be able to only eat mango every day for a month that's I know some people like say that's super cleansing and super nice but for me that would be a mega challenge I'm craving something else, like I would sometimes now prefer a banana, but there's just like when there's mango, I don't want to eat banana because I'd rather eat mango. It's, it's, it's a little bit, yeah, it's, it might be unhealthy even, I, I, I would say, because the body is just screaming for something else. <laughs> or like the brain is saying something and the, all the other parts are saying, enough mango, enough mango, eat something else. But I'm very intrigued by people who can do these mono, mono meals for a longer period of time. I mean also intrigued about people who eat like only potatoes for a long time. I would also be, be get tired of potatoes, even though a potato has a very good, like the white potato. Uh, I'm not sure about the sweet potato, but the white potato, there have been like scientific um, studies done on people only eating potatoes and having great blood results and feeling great and stuff like that but for me I would just it's, I don't know never tried it I'm it's long time I'm I, I would love to be in an area in an abundant potato white potato area and just eat potatoes only potatoes for uh, as long as I can and see what happens see what happens if I can sustain it if I can like keep eating potatoes and 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 not like say oh no too much potato that would be fun to try I've never tried that before and now in Thailand there's like not high, high quality white potato very difficult to find it's like very rare I've, I've never never had a yes I had we, we planted some and they grew it's very hard to I try to grow many times white potatoes and it's they almost always fail but uh, one time, like just threw some potatoes and then they grew and those were like young, small uh, potatoes, steamed or something. So, so good. So good. That's when you, when you come from a country like Denmark where you have potatoes everywhere, then you start like, I want to eat some more potatoes. Last time I was in Denmark, yes, I ate a lot of potatoes. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Potatoes from the oven, potatoes, steamed potatoes, whatever potatoes. Potatoes everywhere, they're nice. Potatoes, if you live in a country where there are white potatoes, it's good, it's good food. I would trade a durian for a bag of nice white potatoes anytime. And then, uh, you can have 10 kilos of mangoes if you give me one kilo of nice white potato organic area where the pumpkin is growing and I don't think it's a big problem 
Except, oh, there's also some bean growing over there. I don't think it's a problem, it's overgrown with a, some, uh, some weeds. Ah, oh, this mango needs to be picked. And, uh, but, uh, <clears throat> this area is overgrown, but it doesn't really matter, because I think it's, uh, the pumpkin will grow anyway. The only problem is to find the pumpkin when they are ripe. Sometimes it's hard to find, and sometimes the pumpkin will go, like, will start to rot before we find it which is a little of a, a bit of a problem. This is how it looks and then I will break it around here so the sap from the mango will not go out. If we break it like too far down the mango there's a lot of sap from the mango that comes out and we will have a problem with ants going everywhere on the table where we store the, the mangoes before cutting. This is the latest hill of uh, rice straw and we have even a uh, watermelon growing here. There was a little watermelon. I don't know what, what happened to it. I mean, there's one watermelon here now. Ah, and the other, other watermelon is here. This is amazing. This is the biggest watermelon I've ever grown here. And it's completely amazing because I've never succeeded in growing watermelon. But maybe this one, I don't want to touch it, but the, the, the size of this one, is um, indicates that it will grow even bigger and maybe grows so it will be like a really good and nice watermelon that you can enjoy actually. <laughs> you can see that the pumpkin are growing quite well here also and they're overgrowing the, the rice straw and probably in a month or so the right you will not be able to see the rice straw almost. And this mango I'm just picked and it, is a, it has a crack here and a little bit of fungi growth or something and also here so I could, I mean, cut this part away. I could make it, ripen it a bit up. But right now we have so much, so it's just better to use as compost. This is what happens every year. Like Lex says, Greg, this year maybe we will not have any uh, mangoes. Because there was like the first flowers disappeared because of the, the moisture, the first rain or whatever it was. But then I said, heck, don't worry. If we don't have mangoes, we don't have mangoes. If we have mangoes, we have mangoes. And I always say positive and say, I, I think we will have a lot of mangoes. And what happens? We have a lot of mangoes. So just stay positive, smile, and say we have a lot of mangoes, and then probably it will come true. But yeah, it's unnecessary stress. When, when people say, oh, maybe we don't have mangoes. Well, maybe not, but what can you do? No need for stress, just stay positive and maybe good things will come. Hopefully good things will come. So much food. Not ready to pick that mango. Or well, can be picked, but I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Yeah, it was so wet that there was a different car pulling another car from out of there. Crazy how how fast things change, and now it's like rock solid. And sometimes, if you if you don't go around the tr every tree, you just go past a mango and say, "Oh, this is maybe ready, or maybe I can wait one day to pick it." And then you look at, inspect it, and the other side is cracked and completely bad, just compost. Yeah, and this mango was high in the tree, so I couldn't really reach it, and I don't have my ladder with me, so I just grabbed the bottom of the bag and. It just snapped off and you can see the sap coming out which is something that we don't know what don't want usually but this is just a, a really nice mango I think you can uh, even um, eat it right away or just wait it for it to soften up tomorrow and the, super this is ready to eat today or tomorrow super nice mango this is how a nice mango looks like I know the that in Thailand they prefer it to be in a, in a bag covered from the sun because they make, get golden yellow. But this is like, you know, greenish, yellowish. This is like a healthy mango in my opinion. Like much more natural than the, the golden yellow ones that you can buy in the talat, in the markets, fruit markets. This is golden.
And now also the mushroom season. It's like in the beginning of the mushroom season. Oh, mushrooms are fun and nice and good fun to eat. And but now I'm also almost at my mushroom limit. Genkai. So it's nice until it just becomes too painful. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, mushrooms make me a little bit tired and yeah, I don't know what's wrong with mushrooms. But they're fun to eat, but and they probably have a lot of cool nutrients, but they also have something anti-human. There are so many people talking about mushrooms are not like with, together with the grains. But for me like mushrooms are like specific specifically strange. The same with the rice berry. Rice berry, I don't digest rice berry very well. I digest the the brown rice much better, like the strangely made rice berry, it makes, I, I, I don't really digest it. And the way I know I don't digest it is I, I can see it in my stool. So, so the, the, the rice berry, it's visible. So maybe I'm not chewing my food thoroughly enough or something like that. So maybe I should be better at chewing my rice berry, but Anyway, I yeah, and probably brown rice is harder to spot in the stool, but the but but the rice berry is very obvious, whole grain rice berry. It's like the. I think it was made in Thailand, like, by some scientists. They just took it and just made it with their fingers. So this is uh, another thing I hope will happen. You can see the ants going in the the holes of the mango. And this is where the mango stem borers were before, or maybe they have been destroyed by the ants. Sometimes the ants can't go down to the maybe the mango stem borer is down here, and and this is where it has been. So there's a lot of liquid down there, and the mango stem borer is just having a nice time there and just eating more. So that's one of the problems that the ants cannot swim and get the mango stem borers. Eventually, if it breaks and the mango stem borer falls down on the on the ground, the ants will definitely get it. So sometimes you can just let nature do the thing, but sometimes it's not, not great if, uh, if all the mango trees just disappear because of the mango stem borers. But otherwise we just chop, chop off the, the branches that are sick. And it's easy to spot when, they're, when the leaves begin to get brown. Oh, and now the sun came out and the view is so much better. And the winner, watermelon. Red Cavendish, Red Cavendish. I'm voting for this durian. Look, look at this avocado under the protection of the of the bananas. I'm voting for this uh, avocado. There was a rodent around here, and then the two dogs that live here, they just started digging all around and digging all around. It was crazy, and. Digging, digging, and until here, and then I think they got tired. But they they, they managed to kill this ba uh, banana. Uh, it's not even dead yet, completely. But uh, it will eventually die. Like planted something here. I don't know what it is, but I, I think it looks similar to green peas. Like it's making some kind of ghost decoration around here. Maybe to scare away the farang. The grass was cut, the weeds were cut. The unwanted plants were cut this month too. Some things are growing, some things are dying. Signs are up again, here and there. I didn't know that, but Lek chopped up the chaya again on the fence. Neighbor is growing uh, corn for fodder. So this is not human food. This is food for animals. 
So every time you see an area where they're growing food for animals instead of food for humans, you know what that, that means. It means it's inefficient. You need to put that food into an animal and then you probably will eat the animal. So it's much more efficient just to grow food for humans and then eat the plants. It's, if, you're, if you care about the environment and your health and the planet and the animals or just one of these things, you should start eating plants exclusively. It's just much more logical. Much, I mean, it just makes sense. It just, it's obvious. Where is Captain Obvious? I don't know. He's gone. He's like the Captain, Captain Obvious. We know. We should eat plants, but nobody eats. Pl not so many people only eat plants. They also eat animals. Why do they do that? Nobody, no, nobody knows. But it's so obvious they should eat plants. Cry, cry, cry! I don't know what to do about the environment. It's so obvious. Just eat plants. One of the good things about a dry, wet season is that you can dry your clothes in the sun. Yeah, longens. Longens coming up. August, I think. They'll be ready. Maybe just a little bit before, maybe end of July. I'm supporting the self-planted beans here with the old tripod, with the old tripod for the small solar panel. We also had a couple of good uh, pineapples. And these are also coming up. A good, good one here. And a nice little one over here too. Pineapples from the garden. <laughs> Best. Also a nice little one here. They're different types, I think. This is like a small type. And what do we do with the top? We just squeeze it off and plant new pineapple plants. And over here. And because it's so dry, we're even uh, watering the garden. Sometimes, not every day. Mango cuttings ready for the freezer. We fill up one box per day or more. It's 5.5 liters. 